Okay, kia ora everybody. Uh, my name is Carla McNeil and it's really nice to see some familiar names popping up in that chat box. I hope everybody is having a great Friday. Um, I'm the Managing Director of Learning Matters and um, also the founder of The Ideal Platform. I'd like to introduce you to Louise Payne, who is also going to be co-presenting with me this afternoon. Kia ora, Louise. Hello. Kia ora. nice to have so many people joining us today. And I'd also like to introduce Sarah Stock, who is our lead consultant, and also Fiona Wilder, a consultant. Sarah is based in the Bay of Plenty, and Fiona is based in the Hawke's Bay. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi there. Hi, everyone. So Sarah and V will be managing our chat function this afternoon. So it looks like everybody's pretty familiar with how to use that chat function. Uh, if you could just pop in there for now, please, and let us know the location that you're joining us from. That would be fantastic. Um, and if you have any questions throughout um, the presentation this afternoon, please feel free to just pop those in the chat function and Fee and Sarah will uh, answer those um, back through the chat function or where they think it's really relevant, they will stop Louise and I and, and they, we will answer those sort of um, mid-presentation. Uh, and we'll also, at the end of the session, we will have a Q&A. So for those of you who have questions that haven't been answered throughout the course of the presentation, then you're most welcome to stay on with us and we'll do our best to answer those for you uh, when we get to the end. So I'd really like to begin by actually thanking you for joining us this afternoon for this um, presentation. Um, we're really proud of the ideal approach to structured literacy and the difference that it's making. Uh, it's an incredible classroom tool, but it's also a very, very, very good um, resource during times of remote teaching. Uh, so this afternoon, um, what we're going to be working our way through the presentation. Obviously, I'm presenting the first piece, and during this focus, uh, during the session, we're going to be focusing on the areas bullet pointed on the screen. Louise will give us an insight into the ideal platform. Uh, and this obviously is a structured literacy platform that the ideal, uh, sorry, the Learning Matters team have developed. I uh, will share with you how this is currently making a difference to 1,300 teachers across New Zealand. And uh, we hope you have the opportunity to learn a little bit more about structured literacy or to consider your next steps for implementation. So we just wanted to begin by uh, remembering that in 2021, we now know so much more about how our children and students learn to read and spell. Technology really has been a great vehicle for introducing to us and making readily available the findings from a body of research called the science of reading. The science of reading encompasses research studies across education, neuroscience, cognitive psychology, and linguistics. And there are thousands and thousands of studies that all indicates the, indicate the benefits to the reading brain when we teach using a structured literacy approach. This body of research, and in particular the neuroscience findings, indicate that all brains learn to read in the same way. The science of reading has taught us what good readers do and what poor readers don't do, and what must be explicitly taught to ensure that we don't leave spelling, reading, and writing to chance. We want to share with you that the Ideal Platform has been founded based on the body of research that stems from the science of reading and also recommendations from the UK Rose Report. Uh, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the science of reading and other areas of structured literacy, I really encourage you to head on over to the Chit Chats page on our Learning Matters website. The Rose Report has given us the key elements that we must be including in teaching and learning, and the principles of structured literacy have taught us the importance of being diagnostic, ensuring we assess for learning, being systematic, being sure to follow a scope and sequence, and teaching from simple to complex. 
and also the importance of being cumulative in our teaching, making sure that teaching builds on previously taught concepts. All of these principles are reflected through the ideal approach. The diagnostic principle is our starting point, and that's where Louise will begin with you as she takes you on a tour this afternoon. Assessing and teaching the foundation skills is one of your beginning steps in your structured literacy implementation plan, second only to building your knowledge, of course. This is where we do begin, however, in the ideal approach, building teacher knowledge and then moving into that area of being diagnostic and assessing for learning. You will see the ideal approach houses assessment tools in these foundation areas and is then very clever in terms of directing you to specific teaching areas once that assessment data has been added. Teachers are experiencing that learning about what sits beneath reading fluency, how to assess and teach these skills explicitly, is making an incredible difference to their student outcomes. There are four stages in the ideal approach to structured literacy. These stages have been developed with approximate year levels in mind. The materials developed in the resource area of the ideal platform and the content that sits inside these, which Louise will again show you shortly, align with the literacy learning progressions. You can see from this table that ideal is suitable for both tier one teaching in the classroom and also intervention across year levels. We also have secondary intervention specialists using the platform with their students. In a nutshell, the ideal approach is an online platform that houses professional learning modules, assessment tools, data analysis and reporting systems, resources, instructional videos, support, and leadership guidance and direction. As I mentioned earlier, IDEAL is currently being used by 1300 teachers across New Zealand. And in some cases, the teachers use the platform as a self-paced learning, assessing and teaching resource tool. And in other cases, teachers and school leaders partner with a Learning Matters consultant to work alongside them to assist the implementation of a structured literacy approach across their whole school. Let's have a look at the various aspects of IDEAL and what it has to offer. Thanks, Louise. Thanks, Carla. So um, this is what the IDEAL platform looks like. So there's six sections on the platform. The IDEAL Startup, Professional Learning, Instruction, Assessments, Resources and Leadership. So we'll begin by looking, having a look at this ideal assessment area. So the assessment area houses our stage one, two, three, and four assessments, as well as this is where you'll come into enter your data entry and generate your reports. So the stage one assessment houses our foundation literacy skills assessment, and this is assesses um, key phonological awareness skills. So this is administered to our junior students and any older students that you know to have difficulties in literacy. Um, within this, there's also a stage one spelling assessment. The stage two, three, and four assessments are all spelling assessments. So teachers can come in and download the words and sentences and administer those to those students. There's a recording sheet also to print off as well. Once teachers have administered the assessment, they'll then come in and enter their data. So they'll click on the relevant term to enter their assessment data. They'll enter their student's name and they'll enter the data into the relevant section. So if you've um, assessed your student using the phonological awareness screening tool, you'll click into that and give your students a score out of five. Likewise, if you've assessed stage two, three or four or the stage one spelling, you'll click into the relevant mark book and enter the data for the, your students. Once you've entered the data, you can then generate a report. You can generate a report for an individual student, um, a whole class or a group of students like an intervention group. So I'll show you what the report looks like. Scroll up to the top. 
So this is the report. This can also be downloaded in a PDF format and printed off and then uploaded potentially into a, a third party management system, your SMS system. Um, so the students' details are at the top of the report. We then have the building blocks of reading success. If you've entered phonological awareness data, this will pull into here. And what you can see is you can also enter data over time. So you can see a comparison in how that student or group of students is tracking. If you've entered stage one, two, three or four data, that will pull into the report as well. So what the system cleverly does is it assesses um, these aspects a number of times during the assessment. So it'll assess initial consonants, short vowels, digraphs, blends, end blends a number of times, and then it averages out those results and puts it at a percentage in the graph. From there, what it does is it identifies a beginning teaching point within the scope and sequence. And it gets this beginning teaching point by finding the first place in the scope and sequence that the student received below 80%. If this was a group report, which you can also generate from the platform, it'll average out those results and find the first point in the scope and sequence below 80% for that group of students. So here I've got my beginning teaching point, in this case it's from CVC, and below that it lists any other diagnostic needs, so any other sounds that the student um, got incorrect. From here I can then click on my graph and it will take me to the teaching resources from where I've been directed to begin teaching from. So this is the resource section of the platform. It houses our scope and sequences, as well as the other teaching resources. So we have a st a st our stage one scope and sequences, which consists of a scope and sequence for phonological awareness and a scope and sequence for alphabetic principle. So I'll just show you the scope and sequence for alphabet stage one alphabetic principle. So what you can see here is the concepts are listed down the left hand side. It has um, the learning outcomes, phonological awareness to consider. And also what we've done is we've aligned our own decodable texts and we've also aligned other um, decodable texts as well that you may have in your school. So if you've purchased us, Sunshine Decodables or Little Learners Love Literacy, we've um, aligned these. So if you're teaching a specific concept, you can come in and look what other books you can use. Um, so, our stage one area, um, the concepts are in these tabs here. So if I've been directed to begin teaching from the SH diagraph, I'd click into that. I'd have my lesson slideshow to teach from. I would then have my independent activities for the students. And we have our decodable readers as well on the platform. So these decodable readers, um, our ideal team is created and you can play them on the screen or you can download the PDF of them. We also have um, lesson plans that also um, sit alongside these decodable readers as well. If you were teaching within stage two, three or four, you would click on the relevant stage. And if you had been directed, say you'd been directed to begin teaching from digraphs, you would click on that and you would have your teaching material your supporting resources, and your lesson plan for the week. I'm just going to click on a slideshow and bring that up for you to show you what that lesson sequence will look like. So each concept has a lesson slideshow. And within stage two, three, and four, um, the lesson sequence is the same throughout those stages. Um, there's four lessons for the week. Um, we start off by reviewing the previously learned concept. And this means decoding, encoding, and decoding words from the previous concept. We then go into reviewing vowel sounds and then reviewing open and closed syllables. And then we introduce our new skill. So what you can see, there's also a notes tab on the right hand side. 
Um, so it is scripted to help you develop your automaticity with your lesson while you're still learning. We then have example words. And then we go into decoding, encoding, and decoding words from the concept word list. There are dictated sentences and a dictated um, sentence checklist for students. In lesson two, we introduce um, words with irregular spellings, exceptions to the rule, um, or any silent letters. We have still our dictated sentences in lesson two and that word level reading and spelling. Um, in lesson three, we begin to orthographically map those irregular words. And we also have vocabulary introduced um, in that lesson three. In lesson four, we introduce morphology. Again, we have those notes to help teachers while they're introducing that morphology. So sitting underneath those slideshows, we have the supporting material. And these are independent activities for the students to um, complete. So there's some guidelines for teachers. There's the um, word list for that concept. There's take home spelling lists, blank templates, word finds, roll, roll and read fluency activities and dictated sentences and also vocabulary activities. We also have a lesson plan, which is our overview for the week. And this really helps teachers to see that structure um, and they can see how that complexity builds throughout the week. Within this resource um, area, we also have a number of supporting resources. So this is where we house our decodable lesson plan templates lesson sequence cards, sound packs, um, posters for your classroom walls, reading strategy prompts, irregular words. There's just, yeah, there's um, a lot of supporting resources in there for teachers to use and that area continues to grow. Did you have anything to add about that resource section, Carla, before I move on? No, thanks, Lou. I think you've done a great job of explaining that. Perfect. Um, so you've got your assessment tools, you've got your resources to begin teaching from, you've got your scope and sequence, you know which order you're going to teach. And the bit that ties it all together for teachers is this ideal instruction area. Um, so they are able to jump into this lesson sequence tab, jump into the relevant stage that they're teaching, and then see example um, examples of our consultants teaching each of those lessons. And this is really helpful for teachers to really get that pace modeled for them and that direct explicit instruction. So it's a really useful um, area for teachers to build their knowledge in as well. Um, we've got videos on using decodable texts, um, how to teach irregular words, using those roll and read games to build fluency. And we've recently just added a remote teaching tips um, area as well. Teachers can then throughout their journey of using the ideal approach can go and build their knowledge in the ideal professional learning area. So here we have different modules and these modules are um, similar in how they're set up. There's an introduction, there's a series of videos and a series of readings that teachers um, can use to build their knowledge. Once they've been through those videos and those readings, they can then go and do this short um, Quiz. So it's just a multi-choice quiz. If any answers are incorrect, it directs the teacher back to videos or readings that they can go and review. Um, so sc all schools use this part of the platform a little bit differently. Um, some schools assign videos and readings to their teachers and then come back together and reflect on those. Um, some are self-paced and just do it in their own time. So different ways you can use this section. Um, we also have webinars in here that our team has created, a syllable types webinar and a syllable division webinar as well. And again, this um, area of the platform continues to grow. So what we've 
tried to aim to create is a platform where teachers can really um, be self-sufficient and, and if they're not sure how to do anything, they can come in and enter the startup section. And in here, they'll find a number of how-to guides. Um, so there's guides, there's video guides, and there's PDF guides. Um, we also have a frequently asked questions section. If you're new, we have an induction checklist so you can go through and make sure that you, you have all the necessary bits under your belt before you get started. Throughout the year, um, we also hold a number of webinars. Um, so these webinars are recorded and then we place these on the platform. So if you're new to the platform, you can come in and look at webinars that have been previously held um, or they're there if you just want to come back and revisit them. So we've had an instructional session webinar, direct explicit instruction, using a decodable text, creating comparison reports. So those webinars are there um, to further assist you. The last section on the platform is the leadership section. Um, so these just hold a number of um, documents and videos um, to help schools on their journey into instruction literacy. Um, so there's um, template letters about informing your parent community on your journey, tips and tools for whānau, um, dyslexia best practice indicators, checklists, um, yeah, so it just houses a number of information and, the, and again this area is growing as well. Is there anything, um, Sarah, Fiona or Carly, you wanted to add? Um, Lou, I was just jumping in about a question uh, that had come in about the structure of the lessons through the different oh, stages. I'm also and, replying to that one. <laughs> oh, cool. um, and so I, I think, oh, sorry. Is it one we can answer for everyone? Yes, I definitely think it is. So um, what I think is important to highlight is that, yes, from stages two to four, the lesson structure is uh, very much the same. The complexity comes in the increase of vocab uh, and also the increase in complexity through sentence structure and dictation and then the increase in uh, the morphology activities as well. In terms of stage one, that is slightly different, and we've actually gone back and reviewed the stage one um, material because we um, have come to realize that teachers really, really need the patterning of the lesson sequence. And so we're just now in the process of designing a pre-stage one to help teachers to prepare students because we're hearing that a lot of children are coming to school and, you know, and, and know we near to be ready for learning. And then we have a, a lesson sequence for the first uh, six concepts or seven concepts and then a lesson sequence where they're sort of becoming more fluent and, and moving through. Just seeing what else is in here. Yeah, there's yep, quite a so few. It's, it's quite hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so another one that's come in is, could this work for year seven and eights who are very low level in a small intervention group? Uh, Sarah, would you like to share a little bit of your experience? You're working currently, well, both of us are working currently in intermediate schools, but would you like to share what you're doing in terms of um, that implementation at intermediate level? Mm, definitely. So particularly with our, you know, our lower catch-up learners um, in year seven and eight, this is ideal for them because technically they've gone through six years of primary school learning um, and they're not readers yet or spellers and so what we definitely see is this gives children a structure it gives them a scope and a sequence that they can work through um, and I certainly know the schools that I work in um, even in two terms they have seen absolutely amazing results with the year seven and eight. With the, old, uh, the children who are capable readers, for them it is more around building vocabulary and morphology and using that language and understanding that language in their reading and in their writing. Thanks, Sarah. Were there any other questions? There? There's a few others, but I'll jump in and answer them in the chat, Lou. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a few in here. <laughs> All right, I'll just um, nip back to that presentation, Carla, if you're ready.
Great, thank you. Um, Judy's asked um, a really great question about, I would assume it all works best if the whole school gets on board. Absolutely, mm. you know, that, that really is the, the holy grail, irrespective of whether you're using the ideal approach or you've got some other, you know, resource structure or support. Most definitely, we, we are very strong advocates for uh, a whole school approach because we know that's what's going to make the biggest difference. Uh, I have a wee saying, and that is, is that it is our responsibility, particularly as leaders in education, to support the development of a consistent evidence-based educational pathway being developed across within schools so that we don't have our children going from class to class and experiencing a diet that is, um, dare I say, balanced uh, and a mishmash of things going on. You know, we, we really want to be working hard to build a consistent evidence-based pathway for our children. So as well as access to uh, the ideal online platform um, for in terms of like an annual membership system that we have, um, this also includes ongoing uh, further support. And we currently provide that support in a range of ways. So we have a closed Facebook group where we currently have our teachers coming in and they get an awful lot of support from us through that Facebook group to help them with their questions of implementing structured literacy and any questions they may have potentially around the platform. We also keep our ideal users um, up to date through Termly newsletters. And as Louise uh, showed you already, we have scheduled webinars throughout the year that are all included in the cost of the ideal platform. And those webinars, uh, vary from being focused on the functionality of the platform and then also on specific areas that we're observing, particularly when we're out in our consultancy schools, that teachers and leaders um, are asking for more support in. And we also have a uh, uh, weekly question and answer sessions with one of our consultants so that teachers know they have that regular weekly support. And that's really, really valuable, particularly if you're going for that self-paced option and you're not working um, in a whole school or in a, in a consultancy um, approach. So it's probably really obvious that we, of course, champion the ideal approach. We're very, very proud of all of the work that's gone on behind the scenes. And I can tell you, it is an awful lot of work to create um, something that looks like this. And we really hope that you can see that it's an efficient and effective way to build that consistency of practice and knowledge. But the, the question crack, that... But it's never good for your computer to drop oh, it. We'll just get this person to mute themselves. I can't do that. Open. Eden, can I just ask you to mute yourself, please? <laughs> cool. So the question you should be asking yourself, does this really make a difference? And is it the structured literacy option that you're looking for? You know, I really want to acknowledge that it's exciting because in New Zealand, we have a growing knowledge of structured literacy and there are a growing number of options. And it's really important that you choose the approach that is right for you. And that will depend on whether, you know, whether you're a one-off teacher or you're, whether you're wanting to go whole, whole school, there will be a number of factors here. So we've just popped a couple of little quotes in here. Um, uh, some things that teachers have said that have already begun their journey with us. We also have many teachers and school leaders who really champion this approach alongside us and they would be really happy to speak with you if you would like to speak directly to a teacher or a school leader who is themselves using the ideal approach. Sometimes I think we like to do that. So you're possibly also starting to ask who can use this and what does it cost? I think I saw that question just jump into the chat. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. It's on the website. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, and so who can purchase the ideal approach? Or who can, we like to think, who can become part of our ideal schools community? Because you may have seen when Louise went into the ideal platform, there is an area dedicated for educators, there is an area dedicated for schools, and there is also an area dedicated for parents. Our vision at Learning Matters is to create an online platform that really, really supports and encourages the alignment of gold standard evidence-based instruction and structured literacy across all of those stakeholders. 
So the schools platform has been our first port of call. Our next port of call is moving into the educator platform and then into the um, parent platform. So this slide demonstrates um, and informs you who is able to come into using our school-based uh, ideal platform. Just to answer another question, Carla, um, someone asked about can you just purchase this a subscription as an individual teacher? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And many, um, some schools that have actually done this, the whole school hasn't been quite ready to get on board. So one teacher might purchase a subscription just to familiarize themselves, begin to see mm -hmm. um, those results, jump into the resource section, and then often it's a ripple effect within their school. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to add to, I know we probably don't have homeschooling parents in here, but we do have homeschooling parents come into the platform, provided they have an exemption to be homeschooling from the ministry. Um, we think that's really important. We, we have really worked very hard to preserve um, our status as a profession, and that's why we don't allow anybody else other than um, other than uh, professionals operating in schools to be coming into this part of the portal. The parent portal in time will support parents who just want to help their children at home. So if we move into the next slide, this is the information that a lot of you will be asking about. Um, this has the cost structure for what it costs to become part of the ideal community and get access to all of those phenomenal things that Louise has just shown you. Um, and you may also be thinking about what your next step is if you want to know more about the ideal approach, if you really truly want to determine whether or not it's right for you. So this is what the investment looks like. Uh, we have a lot of teacher aides in schools that also are interested in using the platform. And we have just recently released a pricing structure for teacher aides, which is significantly cheaper than um, the per teacher user. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then I really encourage you to email us on the link we're going to provide you shortly um, for that information. I also just want to point out that the pricing structure differs significantly if you're in a consultancy school. So the pricing that we're showing you now is the most expensive option um, to become part of the ideal community. It is um, more cost effective when we couple um, the ideal, um, being, becoming an ideal member and part of the community with the consultancy. Um, Okay, and so if you are wanting to have uh, to learn a little bit more about the ideal approach, a really great place to go to is back to our Learning Matters website, and you can see there, um, you can click on that I want the ideal approach and uh, mm -hmm. find out a little bit more. There's an awful lot of information there. We have recently just put up um, a theoretical underpinnings document which might be of interest to some of you who want to know a little bit more about the research of how IDEAL was founded and also um, some of the data behind what we're gathering around um, the significant difference that this approach is making to children of various ethnicities, different genders, um, so on and so forth. And if you think that you would like to learn a little bit more about the ideal approach and perhaps sit with your leadership team or sit with your colleagues to have some more of that information, then I really encourage you to email Louise. Can I just get you to go back to your email address, Lou, please? Thank you. Um, email Louise and uh, she might take you on a personalized tour where she can speed it up and slow it down and, and show you in greater detail some of those areas in particular that you might want to look at in a little bit more detail. Yeah, absolutely. Just and and I and I see on the chat there's a lot of different um, types of questions around that user around RT lists and RTLBs. So just flick mm -hmm. me an email and I can um, answer those questions um, by email or I can set up a Zoom and we can have a chat and, and talk about what that might look like for you. Mm. Carla, I also think there's another important question here regarding PLD applications. 
Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you could give people some insight into the process we're about to go through so they know what they can sure. do for. Yeah, sure. So uh, the current situation with PLD accreditation is that on the 1st of September, I understand that the Ministry of Education are going to release a new tender for PLD providers. Uh, they will be looking for PLD providers who are currently um, providing this service to a fairly large scale because they literally want you to be able to um, pick this up and run, you know, what's that saying? <laughs> I can't be quite thinking of it right now, but um, they want you to just be able to pick up and run with it. So uh, we are going to be applying for that PLD provider status. If you're a school who is interested in um moving into structured literacy professional learning and development then we encourage you to apply for those hours yourself going into term four and we will be working to get ourselves across the line to be available for um, ministry accredited PLD from the very beginning of 2022. So all of that information that I'm sharing with you came from a meeting that Sarah and I had with uh, the minister uh, Jan Tanetti and also Pauline Cleaver. And we we will keep people up to date with how we're progressing um, in terms of that as well. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, so um, we really want to thank you for joining us, for for, um, giving up your time to to come along and see what the ideal approach is all about. We hope you found the session informative. And should you have any questions, please do stay online with us. We will be staying online for a little bit longer to answer those questions with you face-to-face as best we can. Otherwise, we wish you all the best and we really hope to connect with you all again, uh, potentially face-to-face really, really soon. As a token of our appreciation, Um, and for you taking the time to spend some time with us today, uh, we're going to send a wee freebie your way. So keep an eye out in your inbox. We're going to be sending you some of these great concept um, materials that might be able to help you see um, in the flesh what these resources look like and um, perhaps have you thinking about what your next steps might look like. Thank you so much, everybody. It's been really great to have the opportunity to connect with you today. And we really do hope that you are all safe and well in your bubbles during this time. Thanks very much. Yeah, so like Carla said, if we could um, turn on our videos, Carla.